Let's stand together for the reading of the Word of God. Romans chapter 8, and I'll begin reading in verse 16. Romans 8 and verse 16. And as we like to do on Sunday mornings, reading from the Legacy Standard Bible. Verse 16, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children also heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the anxious longing of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only this, but also we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. For in hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance we eagerly wait for it. And in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Because those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who indeed did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ. Will affliction or turmoil or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We were counted as sheep for the slaughter. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Marvelous promise. Let's bow together in prayer. Our Father, we want to acknowledge that we bless your name for the salvation you have given to us, a salvation that can never be taken away. If you are for us, who can successfully be against us? You delivered your Son for us all. He bore our sins in his own body on the cross. And through him, you have graciously given us all things. No one can successfully bring a charge against us, even for sin, because you have justified us and your son has paid the penalty for our sins. There's no one to condemn us. Christ took our condemnation. 
And so there is nothing and there is no one that can separate us from the love of Christ. What a wonderful reality. He will hold us fast. His love will not let us go. And it's in the confidence of this eternal love that was initiated in time past when we were by name predestined to eternal glory. It's based on this work of salvation that is the fulfillment of that eternal plan, that eternal purpose that we come together to worship you. We're here worshiping because you have granted us salvation. Whatever might be our earthly lot, whatever might be the trials and struggles of life, nothing can touch our eternal relationship to you. And we live in the hope of the realization of that relationship with all its blessings and promises. In the meantime, Lord, strengthen us to be faithful. May we be more obedient. May we have more love toward you and toward one another. May we be more faithful to live the gospel and proclaim its truth. We thank you for the forgiveness you continually render to us. And we pray that we would be marked by righteousness that calls attention to the power of the gospel. And we ask that you'll lead us in this worship, empower us by your Holy Spirit, we pray in the name of Christ.